Yes, we're enjoying this. All life. right, so welcome to a night. We're gonna go over our rules. I'm here to teach, not to entertain. So that yeah. means no hitting each other. It means no uh, doing anything that's gonna annoy the other person, so they can't pay attention. Yeah, that's what that means. So Teresa. Behave yourself. Don't hit Sister Lisa. Don't hit Don't her. Don't you dare hit my mama. No. <laughs> you have some problems. No, no fist to cuffs, okay? All right. I'm good for now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start this off with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help us and speak to us there. God, we come today to learn. We come today to receive from you. We come today to let your word move our heart. There, God, teach us to become better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so today we're talking about the power of uh, the day or the power of a day and uh, we're going to be talking about specifically how to take advantage of and the fact that we should take advantage of every moment that we have um, living for God and uh, of our life period and I'll illustrate that as we go along Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse number one says this remember thy creator so let's see Teresa who created the world Jesus that's right good job so the Bible says to remember thy creator. So remember Jesus in the days of thy youth. That means when you are young. Now, young can be a relative term. Um, young compared to what? I mean, we would probably all agree that old is 80, 90 years old is old. We'd probably agree that because the life expectancy starts to become very, very small once you get into the 80s and 90s. People don't live uh, usually beyond 115 years old. That's about the oldest I've ever heard of. In my lifetime, somebody I know of or heard of being that old, 115 was the oldest. So um, you don't expect somebody to live much past that age. So within that, it says, remember thy creators in the days of thy youth when you are young. Now, the Bible says that the, the if you will, the, the redeeming feature of a young, it's in Proverbs, it says that a young man's glory is his strength. Mm -hmm. What that means is, is his energy, his zeal, his, his vitality, his, his ability to get up and get going. And that's not just talking about the man. That's talking about young people in general. Let's face it. When you're young, you have a lot more energy. Yes. And it, 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 it continues. It goes down even to little kids. Two or three years old, um, four or five years old. You have these kids that seem like they've been drinking energy drinks all day. They're bouncing off the walls constantly. And so now they medicate them. I mean, say that's that's not they're not supposed to be that way. No, God created young people to be full of energy for a reason, and it's the fact that um, a parent is supposed to focus that energy. They're supposed to um, direct that energy to be useful, to be something that is productive. Anyways, we'll we'll come back to that in just a minute. But to remember God in the days of youth is why because it is one of the most impressionable times of your life where you're learning things, where you're growing, where um, you begin to uh, put it this way. Each person is like a sponge. So as, if anybody, anybody here ever played with a sponge or used a sponge before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whenever you squeeze that sponge, water comes out, right? When you put it under the tap, it can only absorb so much water. So when you first put it underneath the tap, all that water disappears inside of there. It's like it's gone. It doesn't flow out the other side. It goes in there. And then as it saturates, as there's more and more water in there, then it starts leaking out. Then it starts dripping. And then you can hold that sponge up. And that there comes a point in that sponge when it's absorbed all of the water it can absorb. Every crevice, every little bit and tidbit has been absorbed. Okay? Well, we as people, as sponges, we are constantly learning going to. But there's never a time that you absorb as much as when the, the sponge is new. When it's completely dry, it absorbs things just quickly. Nothing, nothing runs over. But as it starts to fill up, then there's water that is starting to, there's, it's still absorbing, but some of the water's starting to leak out. Some of the water's coming out this area, that area, or just running over the top of it. So when you are young and you are absorbing, you're able to absorb so much more. It could also be a dangerous thing because you are absorbing all of this information and it's building part of you. It's becoming part of you. So you want to be careful where you're getting the information. But you're supposed to acknowledge. The word remember means to think about, to acknowledge, to put your attention on. And so if, if, put it this way, if young people, the only thing young people think about is having fun or only thing that young people think about is what is trending what is going on around them, then all of that time that they are that sponge is being wasted. 
it's 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 a time in which they are not growing. Well, thank God for church. Thank God for Sunday school. Thank God for like night classes, things like this, because you are getting this information. And and even it, oftentimes teachers can get upset, and even parents get upset and be like they're not learning anything. I'm I'm talking about all this stuff, but you don't don't underestimate the fa- the power of the sponge, because it goes deep. There's things that go in there, and it seems like they're not applying it. They're not doing anything about it. But as they grow, they remember it. There, it's it's building their character. They're absorbing it. Right. So. But we're talking about the power of a day. You are supposed to take and apply it now because you develop habits and you begin to do things now that later on will become huge parts of your life. We'll talk about that more as we go along. It says, remember the like we are in the days of the youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, uh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So there comes a time when you get old that you can't do the things you could before. There comes a time when you are... You're getting too old to go mountain climbing. You're getting too old to uh, have the energy to do what you did before, pulling all-nighters and and uh, going to the youth lock-in and playing basketball all night long without having any problems. <laughs> there comes a time when that's just not within the, the, the spectrum of something that you can do anymore. Ecclesiastes, it talks about it. It talks about that when you get old, you start losing your teeth, you start losing your sight, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Depressing subject for a lot of people. My point in this, though, is it says that you're supposed to take advantage of the time when you have the strength that a lot of people say, well, when I grow up, when I when I, when I I get a job, when I get out of school, when I have a car or, or whatever the case may be, then, then, I'll, then I'll be something. Then I'll do something with my life. And they'll ask kids, what are you going to be when you grow up? I think that's one of the stupidest questions you can ask a kid. <laughs> First of all, because a lot of times they don't know. They've not really developed all of their interests yet. But the other thing is, is that it's all the emphasis is on later. I know you're going to school, but what are you going to do now? What are you going to do with what, you, what you've learned? How are you going to apply it? And especially in things that we're living for God, God never intended it to be something you do tomorrow. God never intended you to start applying it tomorrow. And God never intended, uh, the Bible, uh, Paul was talking to Timothy, he said, let no man despise your youth. Mm-hmm. Don't let anybody despise you because you're young. He was a pastor. He was pastoring older people. And he said, look, just because you're young, don't let them despise you because of it. Discount you that you don't have wisdom, that you don't that you don't have. Uh, we'll put this way: you don't have the Holy Ghost. You may not have the years of experience that Paul does, but you've learned, you absorbed. You Paul has taught you, and so take advantage of what you have right now. So I'm going to give you an illustration because this is a concept here. When you're building something, the most important parts of that building are the foundation, the very beginning steps, because that is going to depend on how how tall you can build the structure. For example, if I start with a base like this, if this is my foundation, then I am limiting my ability to build on this. So now, can I put a block on here? Yes. Yes, I can. I can put a block on here like this i can put a block on there can i put two i think i can think if i do this carefully i think i put two in there yeah i can put two can i put a third we can see we'll we'll see if we can put a third on here maybe not maybe if we do it like this and so i'm limiting what i can do what i can build based upon my foundation This is one of the reasons why the writer says, remember God when you're young. Because the decisions you make now, the way you live your life now, is the foundation. It is what you're going to build off as you get older. If you wake up one day and say, well, today I want to be something great, and you have a foundation like this, how tall are you going to be able to build? How great are you going to be able to be? How are you going to be used of God? And so there's some really big bad decisions. Getting into drugs is a bad decision that can fry your brain. Can God still use you? Yes, but you have just limited the how high God can use you, how big God can build you. Can God heal you? God has done it, but God doesn't always do it. And so the decisions you make now make a huge difference. And I'm not talking about just the decision, well, I'm going to do this when I get older. I'm talking about the decision, what you, how you're going to live your day. Because every prayer that you pray is investing in tomorrow. Every time you read your Bible is something you're investing in tomorrow. That scripture that you read today may may go with you the rest of your life. 
You may, God may show you something today that he'll show you another, no other time of your life. Because right now, what you're going through, it speaks to you. Mm -hmm. Something that happened today, let's say you're going to school. Something happened at school that day. And you're reading, you read your Bible the next day or the next morning. And you're reading the Bible. And then what happened in school and that verse hit you. There might not be another time in your life that you would put two and two together just that way. But because of the event of that day, that's the power of reading your Bible. That's a piece of the foundation you would not have and you may never have unless you take advantage of the day. And so if we begin to build and we begin to build with our day with the right kind of things, that you take advantage of it and realize that there are some things that are just useless in your life. Because at the end of the day, that YouTube video that you watched that you laughed at, what is it going to do for you tomorrow? All right. Mm -hmm. Nothing. What is it going to do for you? It's not even a block. It's time that you've wasted. Am I against it? No. There, You could say that there is value in the fact that you're stressed out, you're tired, and you're trying to de-stress, decompress. You could say there is some value, but we have overused that card. Because decompression can happen within 30 minutes, not three hours. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take that long. And so we have all of this space and there's no building. And so that when we come to be it, when we come to the, the time that we're an adult and we, we want to be great, we, we now ha we're intimidated because we have all of this space that's not filled. We have all this area that, that if I, if I was more mature, I would already be here. I would already, if I was more mature in my walk with God, I would already know how to do this. I would already know what the Bible says about this. If I had, if I had read my Bible, then I wouldn't have to try to learn it now. I'm an adult and I want to win this person at my job to, to God. But because I didn't read my Bible when I was young, I don't know what the scriptures are. So now I'm, I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to, to do this really fast and try to build real quickly so I can help this person. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. But we're talking about the power of a day. And, and if you don't understand that tomorrow is going to stand upon today, then why really do anything today? Because we have the, the youth... In our world today are taught that the day don't really matter. Just have fun. You, there's plenty of time when you're an adult. I'm not saying you shouldn't be a kid. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have fun. I'm not saying that, that forget your childhood. Don't for, or, or forget the having a good time. We all like to have a good time. But our, our, our world is completely full of it. And so, one last thing. One last thing. The problem with when we think about living for God, we understand that there's, I've talked about it before, the triangle. Our thoughts become our feelings, become our behaviors, and it's a cycle that goes in a, in a circle, right? So here's the thing. If the majority of the, your time, whatever you do is going to be what you think about. So God's convicted me. God spoke to me several months ago about spending more time doing better stuff because if you do if you do something let's say you play a, a a game on your phone okay you do that what are you thinking about you're thinking about you you're thinking about what you like you're thinking about what's going on in the game and so if what you think becomes how you feel so if now it's all about what makes me feel good because you're playing a game where you're thinking about, oh, this makes me feel good. And so you're thinking about this makes me feel good. That becomes a feeling, that feeling you like, that feeling you want to keep that feeling, that becomes a behavior. You keep going back to that. If you're going to live for God and do things for God, if you don't think about God, because remember the, remember your your Savior or the, your, yeah, how does it go? Creator, the days of your youth. If you, don't, if you don't think about God, then it's not going to become a behavior to do something for God. If you don't think about God, you can't let God touch you. You aren't going to feel anything about God. It, you're not going to feel the love of God unless you're thinking about God. That's not going to motivate a behavior. And so you're not going to be doing things for God unless you put things in your life that keep you thinking about God. So here's the thing. This is what I want to encourage you to do, everybody. Put things in your life that remind you about God. Right. Have your phone put up, pull up a scripture. Have a... Uh, uh, Subscribe if you're on if you're going to YouTube. Subscribe to a lot of apostolic stuff, to Christian stuff, so that when you get on there, it pops up in your feed. Yeah. If you're on uh, social media, subscribe to a lot of godly people, church things that have pe good quotes that have people on there to get a, a short bill of preaching. So it's making you think about God. 
put things in your life. Put your Bible out somewhere so you can see it. Structure your day. Structure your day around God. Not around you. Not around what you want to do. Structure your day around God. Right. That that your day, you're constantly coming in contact with God. You're, const you're constantly coming in contact. You're constantly thinking because you're seeing things that are reminding you about God. Yes. And guess what? What you're thinking about becomes your feeling. And you're like, man, I, I, I can't wait to do this for God. And you, you want, you're you thinking more about praying. You feel like praying more. You feel like listening to preaching more. You feel like going to church more. You feel like talking about the Bible more. You, you feel more enthusiastic. You feel more excited about God. If you want to feel that way, this is how you do it. Yes. Because you're not going to feel it unless you're thinking about it. And then those feelings become behaviors. And all of a sudden, you see things in church changing. It's like, I've never prayed like that before. I've never been that bold before. Why? Because you're so enthusiastic. You're beginning to feel that inside of you. You're feeling that anointing come up because of what you're thinking about. It, and it's producing behaviors. Mm -hmm. It happens now. It becomes something that you create for the rest of your life. So let your thoughts become your feelings, become your behaviors. Let that cycle. Remember God. Remember your creator now. Now. Think about God now. All right. I took a little bit too long on that one, so I'm going to try three. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 21, verse number five. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. In other words, the word tend is that leads to, okay? You know what diligent, diligent means? A diligent person means, it basically means that uh, a person that, that keeps working at something until it's done. A diligent person is basically um, something that needs to be done. I'll do it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to do it until it's done. We're supposed to be diligent, but the Bible says a diligent person, a person that works, a person that does it, they're going to have plenty. That God's gonna bless them. But it says, but everyone that is hasty only to want. A person that jumps into things. Here's the deal. We're talking about the power of a day. The world wants you to jump into things quickly. It's all about now, 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 fast, 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 hurry right now. Don't delay the sales going on right now. Uh, uh, hey, you need to get on this phone call right now. You need to do this right now. Hey, we're all going to the, we're all going to go, go to this place or do this thing. And come on. And it's the pressure of right now. You need to do it right now. Mm -hmm. Most of the time people don't like, uh, when, when you're feeling pressured, it's not that I have a while to think about it. When you're, when you're feeling pressured, it's because a hasty decision, they know that if you don't have the time to think about it, the devil knows that if you don't have the time to think about it and really put it into it, if it's hasty, mm -hmm. you're jumping into things you probably shouldn't or you, you don't really know what's going on. The power of a day. Take your time. Figure out what's going on. Plan it. The other thing about the hasty is you have those people that try to, oh, I need to do this, and they redneck engineering. They're going to fix something and they're just quick about it. Oh, the door's broken. Ah, I can fix that. They go over there and get a clothes hanger and wrap the clothes hanger around the hinge and they get a screw and screw the clothes hanger into the wall. But, ah, it closes now. I know it sticks really bad, but it, it's fine. It's hasty. And the Bible says that, but everyone that is hasty only keeps having desires because they're not doing the job right. The power of your day. You take advantage of the things. If you... If, if you just read a chapter every day, there's 365 days in a year, depending on the year. That's 365 chapters you read in a year. The power of one day. You may, it's not, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, but if you just do it every single day, you're making a huge difference. That's right. So, the idea here is, I'm going to show you here. The hastiness is so that you don't really think about, oh, it, it's just one video. I'm just going to do it. And, and the, the thing is that it turns into a whole lot because at first glance, it doesn't look. It's just one. It's, it's just a little bit. It's just this. It's just that. Just And, you, and it, it, the thing is, it just do it real quick. Get into it real quick. Just And then it, it has a pull on it. The idea is that at first glance, at first glance, it seems like something. And then when you look at it a little bit longer, you find out it's something else. It's a trap. It's a snare. It's something that's meant to hold you and keep you from being productive. If there's anything that the devil's trying to do to the people of God today, 
is to try to suppress them, is to try to keep them from being productive. And the way he does that is by distracting them, pulling them into things, make them, make them have hasty decisions, get them involved in anything except something that actually does good, produces something for God, makes you a better person, prepares you for tomorrow. And so here's the thing. What do you see? A lady. You see, you, you see a, an old man or an old lady smoking a cigarette? Now, if you look really, really carefully, if you look right here, you'll see an eyelash and a nose, and you'll see a young lady. Can you see the young lady? Yeah, I saw the young lady first. Okay, right here's the eyelash. Right there is her chin. This is her scarf. This is her hair going above her eye. Can you see it? You can't see it? Okay. All right, that's okay. You see the young lady? Can you see the old man? Here's his nose, that's his cigarette, that's his mouth, that's his eye. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna go to the next one. What do you see? An old lady. You see, see, now you, you two are seeing the opposites again. So this, you see the young lady, all right? You see an old lady or a young lady? Young lady. You look like you see the old lady. So if you see right here, this looks like her mouth. This is the nose of the old lady. See that? See the mouth? She has her chins tucked down. See? So there's an old lady and a young lady both. We're talking about hasty. When you look at it real quick, you see one thing. But the longer you look, you see, wait, there's something else. Okay? What do you see? Two people? Cup. Or do you see a cup? Um, see, a I cup. see a cup. <laughs> <laughs> the cup yeah. for two people. At yeah. first I see the cup, but now I see the cup. And then you see the two people. Again, we're talking about, and I will, I will pull the video up there for you guys. Picture. Picture, yes. All right, this one, we'll do it real quickly. You see a lady? It's actually a guy with a saxophone. Uh, I see it. Oh, I do see it. This is a tree or two people talking. I do see that too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Saxophone or a lady, and then two people talking or a tree. A saxophone is he's okay. sideways. These are optical illusions. Yeah. All right, what do you see? Tree. Yeah. I see birds flying. You see the lady? I see birds flying. And I see the tree. Yeah, you see the lady? I only see the lady. Mm -hmm. You only see the lady. Birds flying. Yeah. You see the lady? Oh, now I do. Now you do? Okay. <laughs> Last one. What do you see? A duck. Not a, a, duck. a duck and a bunny. That's right. They're both. There's a duck and a bunny. Yeah, I do. Okay. Duck. Oh, yeah, not and then a bunny. <laughs> so, you guys, hopefully you guys are getting the point now so that at first glance it's something and then it turns to something else. So, that's the, that's the thing about hastiness. That's the thing about jumping into things that the enemy wants you to only see one thing. And that's why it's all about hastiness. We're talking about the power of a day, the power of one decision. If you just jump into a decision real quick, if you would have just thought about that decision a little bit more. So instead of, I'll give you an example that's going to get close to home, say it's close home to me, okay? You're sitting there like, you know what? I'm going to go watch YouTube. And then if I just sit there a little bit longer, I will think of something else that I need to do versus what I want to do. But the hasty decision, let's go watch YouTube. And it, it's, the, it's the thing, go do it quick. Why is it in us to go do it quick? Because we are afraid that if we think about it a little bit too much, there'll be something else that we need to do more. Because we do. And so that's the trick of doing things hastily. And the power of your day, don't, don't, take away from that. Put some time in your day. Say, this is the only time, this, this little poor time here is the only time that I'm going to spend entertaining myself. The rest of it, I'm going to do something productive. 
even if it's only a little bit productive. I might be doing a craft. Yeah, it's fun, but when I get done, I have something to show for it. I'm not wasting my time. I could give it to somebody as a gift. Enough said. Moving on. Okay. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, for you shall eat, or you shall drink, nor for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, how they sow not, neither do they reap, neither do they gather into barns. We'll be talking about birds. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are they not? Are you not better than they? Which uh, of you, by taking any thought, can add one cubit to his stature? Basically, worrying about it. How can you make? Can you make yourself taller if you think you're short, like me? If I just think, oh, I wish I was taller. Wish I was taller. Can I add by thinking that way? Can I make myself taller? And why take ye thought for raiment, what you're going to wear, your clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow and they toil not, neither do they spin. Basically, they don't make thread. And yet, I say unto you that even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. He didn't have as, as beautiful clothing as the flowers. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the, fire, into the oven, shall then you not much, uh, not much more, then rather, he shall not much more clothe you. O ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying what you shall eat, what you shall drink, or whether, whether you should be, how you will be clothed. For all of these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient of the day is the evil thereof. All right, we're going to do a skit, and we'll try to hurt. We're back. Hey, howdy, Mary. How you doing? Dad, I don't have anything to wear for the birthday party. You don't got nothing to wear? What is that? Anything. What is this? It doesn't look good on me. doesn't look good on you. No, I don't have anything to wear. I need new clothes. You got a whole shelf full of clothes or drawer full of clothes, and you got a whole closet full of clothes. What do you mean you don't got nothing to wear? They don't look good on me. Okay, and I took all, you... I've wore all of them before. I Most took you to the mall last week, and you picked out this cute little outfit you said it would look so good on you last week i looked different a week ago mm -hmm. i need new clothes i need to go shopping before the birthday party oh and i need food for like money for the food money for yes i need money for food I... you want me to starve no no okay all right all right all right, all right. i got you i got you okay so here's the question have you done your chores this week no, but I still need money. I. Okay, look. I tell you what. It's a birthday party. I want you to be able to go and have a good time. And eat. And eat. I will give you the money for the food. But I am not buying you any new clothes. If you're going to go, you're going to wear something you already got. <laughs> even, even, if it does, even if you don't like the way it looks. If you would have done your chores, you'd have money. I would, I would. Not only would I give you money, but you'd also have your allowance. So you'd have, you'd have that, plenty of money. Okay, so I'm gonna go and uh, when you get your clothes, when you get find the clothes you're gonna wear, whatever you come find me, and I'll give you some money for the birthday party. All right? Okay. Okay. I think that's relatable. I think that I think yeah. that's something that we can say. Okay, yeah, that's real life. Okay. Yeah. So here's the deal. We're talking about the power of a day. A chore, taking a very small thing, that at that moment, at that day, I don't want to do it. It's not that big of a deal. My allowance money, I don't think I'll need it. And then comes a day when you're wanting to go to the birthday party and you want something new to wear. And you find out that if I just would have yesterday taken the 30 minutes out of my day to take out the trash and dust the furniture, that I would have my new dress today. But you can't go back and do it now. And you find out that you just lost out on something that you would so much rather have now. That you would be willing to go back and do it if you could. And not watch that YouTube video. The power of a day. That one decision may not seem like a big deal now. But when tomorrow comes, you look back and you wish, man, I wish I would have taken the time to do that. Yeah, it's simple. Yeah, it's just... A, a silly little skit, but it's real life. Mm -hmm. 
that is a small thing. It's a small thing to have a new outfit. Well, some of the ladies look at me like, is it? Anywho, um, compared to some of the bigger things of life. But you say, I just missed my devotions one day. Just when I'll do it tomorrow, and then tomorrow it's harder. And you look back a week later, and you're like, man, I wish I wouldn't have let it. I would. I wish I wouldn't have let it fall in the side. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm coming in for a landing. Psalm chapter 37, verse number 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Let's stop there for just a second. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Oftentimes we think, I won't get what I really, really want if I take and I do these other things. But that's where you're wrong. The things that really matter, the really big desires of your heart, the desires of everybody's heart, the desire to be loved, the desire to have a good life, a good family, the desire to have peace in your life, those are the really important big desires. Those come from living for God. God will give you those desires of your heart. Those don't come from just doing whatever you want to do. People think it does. Oh, I will be happy if, I, if I, I'm doing whatever it takes to, get me happy, to make me happy. You're wrong. Because the things that the world offers to make you happy only last for a minute. And you're just as bored and you're just as unhappy as you were before. Right. So, mm -hmm. commit the ways unto him. It says, and trust also and he will bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. That's hard to do, but here's the deal. If you keep on doing it day after day what you're supposed to do, and you wait on God, you'll find him giving the things that you want the most. You'll find him giving you the desires of your heart. And here's the, the last part, and this is hard. It says, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Young people struggle so much when they, when they look at other young people, and, and it looks like those other young people are having so much fun. And it looks like they have everything they want right now. I'll give you an example. They, 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 those, and... It normally only lasts for a week. But those two, that young lady and that young man, they're so in love. They have such a great relationship. They're, they, they, they love each other so much. And you can look at that situation and be like, man, wish I had a boyfriend or girlfriend. Wish I, I, wish I was dating somebody. Whatever the case may be. You can look at that. And, and the moment, it looks so good. And, and the Bible says that we're not supposed to fret ourselves because of them that seem to prosper in their way. That It looks like they're getting what they want now when God tells us to wait. And then a week later when, they bro when they've had the nasty breakup and the whole school knows about the drama. They're like, I'm glad that it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really, really easy to look, and there's there's lots of things. I just I pulled an example out of the air. But there's lots of things that it seems like, oh, I want it now, or, or that we see other people, and it seems like they're getting, they're, they're taking a shortcut, and they're getting what they want. And, and, and young men, young ladies, they all deal with this. They deal with it in different ways. The young ladies maybe dress in a certain way. They get the kind of attention that looks like they're getting it right now. They're, they're getting, the end road isn't good. The guy thinking that, you know, if I do things this way. If I do the way these other guys are doing it. If I if I go hang out with them, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be popular if I go do drugs, whatever. The end result. It's really, really hard for young people to see tomorrow. And that's why I've been teaching like this the last couple of weeks. Is because if there's anything that's gonna help young people to do what's right today is if they can see tomorrow better. Alright. My last object lesson here. Not this table. Okay. There we go. Anybody know what this is? What the? So it, it's I a bowl. It, it's a bowl. Oh, it's a bowl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Alright everybody, here we go. 
<laughs> so now that looked cool right <laughs> it looked cool bowl on fire you saw it was a bowl of water and uh it indeed was a bowl of water uh with some gross dish soap in it and then what i added to it was made the fire happen right so we think oh that's cool how many of you would like to try that i do have some fun with it play with it maybe maybe not okay but i can take this here And I've got a torch here. Now, here's the thing. This torch and that bowl are different in one aspect. One did produce fire. It was a poop of fire. It looked cool. It looked awesome. This is a smaller bit of fire. But this smaller bit of fire is going to last three, four, five, six, a hundred times longer than that fire is. So we're talking about value here. So we can look at other people and say, man, that looked cool. I could have I could, that huge poof of fire. Everybody's going to think that's awesome. But when we actually look at it, we realize this is a lot more valuable. I can do a whole lot more with this than I can with that. In fact, there's very little I can do with that. I can't even, I doubt you could roast a marshmallow over top of the fire that just happened there. It won't last long enough. But you can roast a marshmallow over this. And so when we consider the power of a day, the, con the, the power of what you do now, it's better to be consistent. It's better to have something that lasts and that keeps building and it ke every single day is adding things to your life than it is to have one moment of a poof that looks cool. And a majority of young people, a majority of people in our world, period, young people are not, are all about that poof because it looks cool and it feels good and everybody wants to see that. But when they actually go and they need to roast a marshmallow, they don't have anything. And so they're crying. They look for God. They look to the people. They look to the doctor. They're, they're, they don't have any money, so they're, they're trying to find a government program that can help them. They're, anything they can find to try to help them in their situation because they gave their all. They gave their day to the poof. Mm -hmm. They gave their day to a moment. Does this make sense? We've, we've Absolutely. come across here. So... Make sure I got this here turned off. I turned the gas off, so I'm just letting it out of the hose. And there we go. I'm gonna set this aside for a second and we will uh, get this out. You'll stand with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you to God for this class that we've had today. I pray help all of us, me included, God. I need the reminder. I need to apply it to my life, dear Jesus. Help me to take advantage of the day, to take advantage of every moment that I have living for you, to God, to think and to know and to think about you, God. To realize that by thinking about you, that Jesus, I can make myself a better believer. I can make myself a better minister. I can make myself a better child of God. I can be more like Jesus. And that's my most uh, important desire. That's the chief desire of my heart is to be like you, Jesus. So I pray, help me to God to apply it to my life, to do it, to live it, to walk in it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. You too, Bland. Hope this bless you. And we'll see you next time.